join you. So here we go, Penn State, the season opener. We always love these games, Andrew, because you never know where the season is going to take us. We've been to a lot of different bowl games with Coach Franklin and Penn State here now in his 10th year. And I think we're going to be going bowling for sure. The question is, do we go to a playoff? Because the high expectations for this roster, for this team, and I think it's a team that can live up to it. As we talked to Sal Wormley, one of the offensive linemen, he just said the difference is we've got guys everywhere. And he named just about every single position. And I think they showed flashes of that tonight. It was an uneven performance, but certainly good enough to handle the Mountaineers here at Beaver Stadium. Yeah, for the people that like to freak out and overreact to every single play and just, just one game and stuff like that, Penn State did what they had to do to win the football game. As James Franklin said in his post-game press conference, they were a little bit inconsistent in all three phases of the game. You alluded to it a couple times talking to the guys that when a play needed to be made to put a game away and to separate Penn State, the play was made for the most part by the Nittany Lions. And it's Drew Aller's first start, so you know the offense wasn't going to come out and be as sharp as it could possibly be because there's still going to be some growing pains there. But he was efficient, commanded the huddle, as Sal Warmly yeah. said, commanded the huddle. We can't exactly say what Sal Warmly said, but it was, <laughs> it, it was, it was, it was a good sound bite. Drew took control, in other Drew words. Drew took control, in, right. in, in, in other words. George Carlin would love what Drew Aller had to say to the guys on the offensive yeah. line. But, um, yeah a lot of positives to take. I was impressed with Nick Singleton. I was impressed with Keandre Lam Lambert-Smith. Uh, special teams, not so much impressed with that. We'll see how that develops going through. So let's go unit by unit because our overall takeaway was that this is a really good Penn State team with a ton of potential that they'll clean up and they have all of September to do so. They got a couple of games in October. Iowa could give them a little bit of trouble in the whiteout, the, the road game to Illinois. Those first road games are always a little, you know, that sometimes there's an off performance there and Illinois has some good coaching staff that caused them issues years ago. But I think the bodies that they're going to take out the champagne are get, going to get that job done. So let's talk about the offense in Drew Aller. 21 of 29, 325 yards, three passing touchdowns, zero interceptions, even though one probably should have been picked off in the end zone. He was poised. He was confident. He's got a big arm. I love the way he throws 15 yards out, 15 yard outs, just effortless with, with his play. Um, and then of course he has the offensive line and the running game to take away. No big numbers for Singleton or Catron Allen. Really, they put the pressure on Drew Aller to perform and he did. Yeah, and what actually impressed me more, and it's kind of simple, and I, and I asked Drew about this in post game, is he dealt with a, a couple high snaps tonight. He said he only dealt with two. I thought I counted four or five down here on the sidelines. But what was impressive is he got up, got the ball down, and he didn't seem to be rattled as West Virginia was playing pretty much cover zero. So when you're playing cover zero, they're bringing pressure, and he seemed to be able to go through his reads and everything. I did zero in on uh, Olu Fashionu a couple times. Guy's just impressive, getting his face mask ripped down, and he's just there on the backside. So you know that's a, that's a little comfort blanket for a first start as as Drew Aller, even though he had a lot of playing time last year. I mean, I was, I was impressed with Drew. You mentioned a 15 yard out their zip they're sharp the ball's out of his hand pretty quick showed a couple times his ability to scramble took a couple big hits too I think it was two big hits on sacks I was impressed how he back um, you know protected the football each time when he when he took those so that what that was impressive to me what do you want to say and I know to the Penn State Nation and this isn't a ding on Sean Clifford uh, Penn State fans like that the ball was protected too on big hits yeah no doubt about it and, and one thing just to wrap up the offense I like when a quarterback hits a wide open receiver mm -hmm. And that's not always the easiest thing when they're wide open. And that last touchdown to Malik McLean, not only did he hit him, you know, and complete the pass, obviously, which doesn't seem very difficult, but sometimes when they're wide open, it is. He hit him in stride so that he could make a nice football move to get to the end zone when it comes to that. And then Bo, Central York, Central York comes yeah. in and finishes the job and showed what he can do. Coach Franklin talked about it. Uh, Drew Aller talked about it. I mean, there was there was a lot of praise for Bo in a short period of time on the field. Ran hard, hit a beautiful slant route on either third or fourth down to like extend the drive, and then he ends up getting his first score. And I like seeing the offensive line come up and, and pounding him on top of the head, and that continued all the way over to the bench area. And just one more thing I wanted to add about Drew Aller. What I, I really like too about him is you mentioned the out routes. It seemed like Penn State kind of found a groove, and Drew Aller is very comfortable rolling out to his right and hitting that deep in route crossing pattern. And, and they were able to punish West Virginia a couple times uh, with that for, for big gains, and that was very impressive. And one he threw a little bit behind, I think it was Keandre Lam Lambert where he had to stop, but uh, for the most part, hit those guys in stride and, and sitting down right in a hole. A lot of arm talent and certainly a ton of athletic ability for Bo Perbula, so we expect to see a lot more of him, certainly in games that get away from the opponent. But 
maybe we'll see him down the line. Yeah, there's a pa there's a package. Yeah, there's a package somewhere in this offense for Bowen, like you kind of saw, and just based on how uh, Drew talks about him, the offensive line talks about Bow as well, and even James Franklin talks about him. James loves his running quarterbacks. We we know that. He'll find there, there's a package somewhere in there for both of them. Because you got to give the defense something to think about when it comes to that. All right, on the flip side, not as long of a conversation about the defense. Um, not because we don't like defense, just because all the attention was on the offense and on the new quarterback, new starting quarterback after four years with Sean Clifford. Uh, look, Curtis Jacobs said it, alluded to it. I asked him about it. You guys weren't that you know sharp first and second down all the time. West Virginia had a good offensive line, but when they needed to get to the quarterback, they did. And when they needed to get him off the field, they did. And it, and it really, the game was you never really felt in doubt, even when it was tied 7-7. Seven, seven. I, mean, I mean, down here on the field, I kind of felt like Abdul Carter had a quiet game. I know he made some big plays behind the line. I know on the one on the Penn State sidelines, uh, he came up, you know, you know, did the little pose when he got the big stop right there. But I don't think really anybody on the defense had that, that standout game that, like, last year against Auburn, you were able to point to Abdul Carter as there is a wrecking ball right there. Curtis Jacobs had a couple of those games last year. Chop Robinson definitely had a couple of those games. Uh, I think Adis Isaac played, played pretty well on the defensive side of the ball. And, and the corners, I actually thought, had the best game out of, out of everybody, out of the whole defensive unit. I mean, that was my perspective down here on the field. Yeah, which is kind of the reason why the conversation's a little shorter about mm -hmm. the defense, because they're locked down on the outsides, and, and the Mountaineers really weren't able to get anything going and continue it all the way down the field. They had some nice chunk plays on the drives that they did score on. They were able to run the ball some. But again, you know, Penn State was able to rise to the occasion when they needed to. Yeah, Jalen Reed, really nice play with his back turned to the football. We've seen that in, in the past where if you don't get your head around, you're beat. But he played the ball nice down on the fade into the corner of the end zone at the pylon, um, you know, from about the 30-yard line. I, I thought that was a really good play for Which him. Which I'm glad you pointed out because already people's minds are going to go to Columbus, right? How do we close out the Buckeyes mm -hmm. if we're winning on the road? And you do that with plays like that, with lockdown corners against those wide receivers and depth at the defensive line position because you know years ago I made JT Barrett look like the yep. Heisman Trophy winner and it was like a skeleton drill he was just picking off receivers left and right because they could not get any sustained pressure on him special teams now that's a conversation uh, we're not going to go into it too deep Sanders Sahedak missed his couple of kicks that brought out Alex Falcons um, close competition coach Franklin talked about you love special teams so how concerning is it to you early in the year I mean everything's turning over when it comes to special teams, what stood out to you? I, I do love special teams, and I, I focused on, you know, the operation. I thought all the snaps were good. I thought the hold, holds were good on the kicks that uh, were missing, stuff like that. I what, what that is, James has said the quarterback, or the competition, excuse me, between the two was very close, and then you miss the kicks. It's It's got to be the other guy if it's, if it's that razor thin um, through camp. So, I mean, James alluded to the punt not being a great average i think that has to do uh the return game didn't really have a chance to, to get a get a look at the return game on the punt side tonight no turnovers in that especially you know taking a hit on a fair fair catch referees are going to say that's a blo uh, blocked in right there maybe you get a flag in a conference play on that one but uh at least that you know Penn State didn't do anything really in the return game um you know that was a negative to me two last points i'll make Hardly any penalties. And late in the no. game, they had one penalty Big for five officials, yards. officials letting them play. I mean, well, well, I know you pay attention to the officials too. But what stands out about that is game number one, that's really yeah. clean. Yeah. I mean, that is an experienced team to play clean like that and only get one penalty late in the game. I think they finished with one. And then also the other thing is your beard's now 1-0. It's won a Calder Cup championship and the beard is 1-0. Not sure we're going to keep it there. But, you know, I just wanted to say that you're undefeated with the beard this year. The superstitions, it's yeah. it's not carrying over to the football season. All right, All right. well, we got a Calder Cup championship out of it. We can't yeah. expect much more than that. Andrew Kalista, Todd Sadowski, thanks for watching. Big win for Penn State, 38-15. They cover late in the game for anyone that's interested in that. That was that was that was interesting. Bad beat for some people. That's right. Bad how beat that, for some how people. How that played out down the stretch. But next up is Delaware. Obviously, we don't expect any kind of pushback from the Blue Hens. Um, and then it's the first road game, which is a big noon kickoff on Fox 43. To the to uh, our fans back at home, look at all the District 3 talent that is on the Blue Hens next week coming up to Beaver Stadium. That's something you want to pay attention to because there's a lot of guys from our area uh, that populate Delaware's roster. And we expect a lot of playing time for number nine, Bo yep. Pabula, to, to get out there after they get this game in hand next Saturday at Beaver Stadium. Thanks for watching.